Hey everyone, welcome to another video and thank you for tuning in. It's been another week and there's been a lot of news, so let's get started. All right, well, unfortunately, the thing that made a lot of headlines this past week is the crash that occurred in Texas, where a Tesla Model S, a 2019 Tesla Model S, uh, crashed into a tree, and unfortunately, uh, two people died as a result of that accident. Now, the big thing here was is that the press wanted to, as usual, blame uh, Tesla's FSD, and then kind of exaggerated some of the um, details about the crash. One is that they said that the crash was burning for hours, that the car was on fire, and that the fire department couldn't put out the flames, and it actually requested the help of Tesla. Obviously, that's not true. Um, a fire chief that was on scene um, responded to those uh, original reports and said that, you know, the fire was actually put out in two to three minutes and, you know, that they never needed the assistance of Tesla or anybody else in, uh, in putting out the fire. So again, more information is coming out about that. And the sad part about this is that two people lost their lives during this crash. So that's just always tragic. So my uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of uh, those individuals. Now, um, the other thing that resulted out of this is that, unfortunately, the reports that there was no one in the driver's seat has led to a video that Consumer Reports did showing how um, FSD or autopilot could be uh, defeated by using uh, some weights and stuff like that. Most of us actually already knew that, but that video's out there, and I don't know that that's a good idea because that just, again, I know it's on us to be as safe as possible, but showing how to do it doesn't always lead to good things, you know? But at the end of the day, again, tragic accident, and, you know, keep those uh, individuals, families, and friends uh, in your thoughts. Now moving on to um, new releases this week, uh, as far as electric vehicles go, the Audi A6 has uh, debuted, and even though it's a concept car, it uh, has some credibility because Audi has done a good job of releasing vehicles that are pretty close to their concept. Now, the takeaway from the A6 is going to be, it's packed with features, but I think the most interesting thing about this vehicle that you should know about is the fact that the headlights or all the lights around the vehicle actually project, can project things out like puddle lights. So when you use a turn signal, it's going to project a, a turn arrow on the ground that shows which direction you're going. The headlights, apparently you're gonna be able to play video games with the headlights while you're charging your vehicle or it's in park. You can project onto a wall and use your phone to play video games. So that's pretty cool. That's a new feature that you know I think is going to be increasingly more popular as electric vehicles, more electric vehicles come out, that the lights are going to be a key factor in um, showcasing its technology. You know, whether it be the ambient lighting inside, headlights, projector lights, but I, again, I think it's going to be something that most manufacturers capitalize on. Moving on to other vehicles that debuted, Xpeng put out their P5. Now it's a smaller version of their P7, but again, the big thing that you should know about in the P5 is that they are highlighting their LiDAR technology for their autonomous driving. So they're actually going the opposite way of Tesla. Tesla is going with the pure vision and Xpeng is gonna rely on LiDAR. So that's something that only the future will tell on who's right, but it's interesting to see two different um, manufacturers go after you know the same goal in two different ways so again we'll just uh, as consumers watch to see which one ends up being the best and we can uh, benefit from that so 
Let me know in the comments which you think is going to actually win out at the end of the day. Five years from now, will LiDAR be a thing of the past or you know, or will smaller versions of uh, the LiDAR system that's more affordable make it and Pure Vision was, you know, something that, again, is a thing of the past. So, again, let me know in the comments who you think is going to win. Also this week, uh, the Shanghai Auto uh, Show went on and one of the uh, vehicles that Xpeng put out there as well is the flying car. Yes, and a lot of these flying cars are um, basically termed as VTOL, which is vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And they showcase their uh, flying car, which looks amazing. I am i can't wait for that to happen. I'm a little scared, but I'd be the first one in it trying to uh, essentially crash it, I guess, is what I would do. But I would love to uh, give my uh, try at uh, driving a flying car. Now, if you think this is so far off in the future, uh, it may be, but it seems like people are really trying to get to this a lot quicker than in past uh, years and if you don't believe it take a look at the flying car races that a company in Australia is trying to organize for later this year yep that's right someone in Australia a company in Australia is trying to put together a flying car race for later or the end of this year so again just google that in their flying car race uh, in Australia and you can see all the details about it. I hope it uh, comes to be because that's going to be fantastic. I mean, who doesn't want a flying car? Yeah. Talking about the Shanghai uh, Auto Show and some of the vehicles that debuted there, GM is working with a company there that produces a vehicle called the Mini. Now they've been working with this company for I want to say the past couple years and the Mini has been doing really well. Now that was uh, GM's segue into the China market. Um, the way that they did it is that they uh, had to work with a Chinese manufacturer in producing a vehicle so that they can then produce their vehicles and sell them in China. So that was part of the agreement. Now the key thing about this vehicle is that it's $4,000 and the new one that they're putting out at this particular auto show is actually a convertible and the takeaway from uh, this brand and this uh, vehicle is that it's actually outselling the Tesla currently and why I think it's just the price point these vehicles start at $4,000 you know they're compact tiny perfect for the market you know that uh, they're selling in and for four thousand dollars you can actually have an electric vehicle that gets most of everything that you need done and now that there's a convertible I'm sure it's gonna do very well so take a look at that and uh, what do you think about those vehicles coming to the US I think in a few years I think that's gonna happen some of those vehicles are definitely going to make their way across the pond and we should be uh, able to purchase some of those are you guys interested in that or do you think uh, those are uh, only gonna be you know kind of side markets and that we'll stick with our domestic brands so again let me know in the comments if you think that Chinese vehicles uh, are going to be popular here in a couple years now um, staying with new vehicles uh, debuts um, Toyota has put out their BZ 4X. I know that's a lot. BZ4X. It is a crossover SUV and it, it looks great. But the quick takeaway from this, uh, along with all the other stuff that you know it's always packed with, just like every other vehicle, is that it has a yoke steering wheel. So that's pretty interesting to see that another auto manufacturer is now going toward a yoke steering wheel. So interesting all right well uh, moving on to uh, other brands Rivian has put out their insurance 
Yes, they are following suit like Tesla and they will have their own insurance that they'll offer to uh, customers. It's going to cover a wide variety of things, um, including, you know, uh, boats, I believe, and ATVs. It's like an adventure um, coverage kind of thing. So that's pretty interesting to see that another manufacturer is trying to branch out into different aspects of the auto industry. So we'll see how successful that's going to be in uh, and the only time will tell on that one. The last bit of news uh, that I have is that SpaceX Crew 2 successfully launched. Congratulations. And again, you know, we are making uh, space travel seem uh, mundane, which is just crazy to me to think that putting people in space is starting to feel kind of normal. You know, that's amazing. So it's successful launch. It was a one day delay, but they did launch Friday and everything went smoothly. And they're just waiting to dock with um, the International Space Station. And once it does, I believe they're gonna have 11 people on the space station, which uh, I guess is pretty crowded for the space station. So again, congratulations to them. And it just means that hopefully we someday will get to travel in space and it'll be affordable. I know that's a long way to come, but you know, the thought of that is just absolutely amazing. All right, everyone. Well, there you have it. I hope you are caught up. And if there's ever any other topics that you're interested in, please let me know so that I can keep you up to date on those things. And as always, go to your car meets, have fun with your mods and enjoy what you have. We will see you on the next video. Thank you, everyone.